a very good morning good afternoon good evening to all the participants and the students for this nptel course titled multi criteria decision making and my good name is raghunandan sengupta from the ime department at iit kanpur so as you know this is the fifth week uh, set of classes which is going on and this total course duration is for 12 weeks spread over 60 lectures and each week we have five lectures of half an hour each and as you know there are assignments after each week so obviously once you finish the fifth week you will all the students and participants will take the fifth set of assignments so the broad umbrella under which we are discussing many of the topics is basically multi criteria decision making and under that you have multi objective decision making multi attribute decision making and there are sub parts like of mcdm and i have explained that that in multi objective decision making is more mathematical where continuous variables are considered more uh, straightforward and it is more objective while multi attribute decision making and, uh, and the concept related to multi attribute utility theory is more subjective more discrete uh, search and there is much more the answers which you may get under madm and the concepts used in ma ut would be much more um, uh, subjective based on the decision maker this is the 23rd lecture which is we are in the third lecture for the fifth week the coverage which we will be doing and obviously when i mention the coverage i mention the point also that overall under the broad umbrella we will cover merit optability we have covered few of the concepts of mcdm definitions the comparison of M modm then multi attribute um, decision making and we will consider further on the pareto optimality con concept property of dominance what does dominance mean strong pareto optimality weak pareto optimality how the concepts of pareto optimality can be understood in 2d space in 3d space uh, it will be it we can imagine and we can also analyze but in higher dimension it will be difficult for us to visualize we'll consider effective versus in in inefficient solutions the concept of karish kuntagar condition this what i'm saying is not the total coverage for today's lecture we will cover it and whatever today's lecture is that will be updated in the slides and it will be shared accordingly the karish kuntagar condition the scales of measurements which are nominal scale ordinal scale interval scale ratio scale and why scales are important you will understand when we come to the concept of multi uh, multiple attribute concept of decision making where decisions are more subjective than being objective and then we'll go into depth about goal programming and go step by step so when we consider a multi objective problem which we did discuss and i did mention few important points which will be highlighted with examples so the points which we discussed and which was the focus i'll use the red color so that the differentiation of the colors scheme which i always insist would make things much clear so if you remember in multi objective decision making where it is more objective uh, oriented multi objective decision making multi uh, where it is more as i said continuous mathematical much more clear clear cut answers so you have functions f1 to say for example f j j is a suffix i am using even though in, in the concept where we used in the last lecture was m but j is being done such that all the subscripts are absolutely clear cut there is no confusion and subject to conditions being g1 being less than equal to b1 and these uh, continue to say for example g k capital k being less than equal to b capital k and if you remember i did also mention x is not a scalar decision variables 
is basically in the search space from x1 to x capital L. So, it is a L dimension one. But obviously, remember when we solve the problems all, uh, always uh, later on in multi attribute uh, decision making, we will always consider there are m capital M number of alternatives which is A and there are n number of criteria and the relationship of m and n which I said that m can be equal to n m can be more than n, m can be less than n will be clarified as we proceed with different type of problems. So, let us consider the multi objective problem of the form where you have you need to optimize, optimize means it can be maximization or minimization there is no problem. You need to optimize f 1 to f m which is basically f 1 to f j we are saying x which is the decision variable by the way x when we are considering it can be depending on the problem can be continuous, can be discrete, can be binary, can be mixed integer whatever it is. So, when I consider these prob problems I am mentioning the examples they may be repetition plus please bear with me. Continuous case can be say for example, you are producing paints in liters, liters can be 2.52 liters, it can be 10.69 liters it can be 125.6255 liters. So, they are continuous variables and obviously, an amount of pain being produced cannot be negative. So, they are all continuous variables greater than 0. Now, when I come to the concept of integers, it is when, when you are considering the production of say for example, number of chairs, number of tables, number of trucks being utilized when you are transporting goods, number of bins you are packing, packing that means putting in and transporting those are integers that means you cannot have 2.25 number of trucks being being utilized for transportation or you cannot basically make 1.259 number of chairs. So, they are integers. In the case of many problems where it is binary it will be whether you build the factory not build the factory whether you transport do not transport. So, they are binary and in many of the case, uh, other examples they can be decision variables which we will see later on which can be e integers, some of them integers, some of the discrete, some of the binary and, and accordingly. So, when I mention x is basically uh, of L dimension, so I am not going to the details, but this is the basic uh, the framework. Here f 1 to f m which is basically f 1 to f j are individual objective functions such that I want to find out the best value of these functions which we considered in the example the la last lecture. So, if you remember there were two objectives and these two objectives when they are optimized they give you different set of decision variables x 1 and x 2 and uh, interestingly the maximization um, uh, problem for both f 1 and f 2 gave the same answer for f 1 and f 2, but for different um, uh, solution or for the decision space. But when we try to basically find out the common point based on the multi objective case, then we saw that it was an integer problem if you remember, then we found that the objective functions for both this uh, f 1 and f 2 were different, but what was important is the decision variable which was x 1 and x 2 was same. And I showed you in a very simple way in a, a two dimensional case, how you can visualize how uh, the solution space that is point number 1 and also the optimum point or optimum solution separately for f 1, separately for f 2 and then combining them we saw that there was a difference. So, here we are saying that f i uh, which is basically each objective function basically is on the real line once you put the value of the decision variable it gives you some functional value which you want to optimize individually it can be done but we want to basically collectively optimize that is what the idea of multi criteria or multi objective decision making is. There may be instances when the objective functions are at least partially in conflict that is we do not have any decision vector x which optimize all of the objective uh, problems or all object, uh, objective functions simultaneously. So, again coming back to these two examples. Number one the example which, which we considered in the 22nd lecture, 
where we want to optimize a function f1 and f2 separately first and then combining them. So, we found out that they were different results. Now, when we come to the concept of multi attribute concept where there are attribute characteristics and where it is much more subjective, consider these examples that my, my means uh, an individual decision maker and consider I am the decision maker, I want to buy a car or I want to get an admission for some college or I want to buy a house or I want to recruit somebody. So, in that case, if in, when I am considering buying a car, the conflicting um, uh, criteria here the, the con conflicts are happening for the criteria or it can happen for the alternatives when we basically combine the criteria and try to basically compare the alternatives. Alternatives are basically buying the car can be based on price, can be based on mileage, can be based on maintenance cost, can be based on safety and so on and so forth. For the case of mileage, case of maintenance, case of cost, it is all very clear cut. There is a price component and it can be communicated, it is very objective in nature and you can analyze. But what if we consider the concept of safety features, what we consider the concept of uh, say for example, style, what is the idea that how would we consider the concept of color. So, in that case, the concepts of multi attribute decision making along with multi objective decision making will be considered for such decisions when the decision is there to buy a car. The other two examples which I mentioned few minutes, uh, minutes back is buying the flat. I come back to the same example time and again because these are the example based on which we are proceeding. So, it should definitely give you a better idea that how these problems can be utilized or the concepts can be utilized to solve the problem. When you are solving the problem of buying a flat on an apartment, we know the objective facts are price, objective facts are maintenance cost, but the subjective facts can be how safe it is or how near it is to the metro or how near it is to the transportation hub like bus, taxi, auto or how close are the schools, how close are the set of offices <coughs> where people work, where you have to basically go and work. So, these are uh, the sets of criteria we want to basically consider when trying when you want to buy an apartment. Similarly, when you are going for a higher studies as I mentioned, I will keep mentioning these points again, it can be based on price of cost of tuition, it can be based on what is the quality of education, what are the different type of courses which are offered, how are the faculties what is the scenario and the chance of getting good internship, what are the scenario and chance of get a, getting a good um, uh, final placement, what is the contact and how good is the contact of the alumni. So, these all these criteria will be considered where some of the criteria would be objective, some of them would be subjective. But coming back to the last point which is there, there may be instances where there are conflicts. For the car example, price is too high which is detrimental to, to my decision process because I want to basically buy at a lower price, but the safety features are excellent. Or consider there the safety features are very low, which is I do not want, but the mileage is excellent, which is positive to me. So, how you basically balance the positive and negative points that has to be analyzed. For buying the, for getting an admission in a college, it is very costly. But the set of, of alumni or set of, of courses or the set of faculty members are excellent. Or it may be the cost of getting a loan is very cheap because people are willing to, uh, banks are willing to give you very good um, um, rate of interest rate for getting good um, loans. But maybe the educational level or the type of education which you will get in that institute may be of not, not that quality when you basically try to analyze with other institutes. So, those compromises have to be analyzed and what is best that would we will consider considering the concepts of utility theory which I have already considered and further on. To make things more formal, we state few results which are basically the properties of Pareto optimal solutions, which may be considered as relevant and important in this area. Now, when I am considering the concept of Pareto optimal solutions, if you remember generally consider this case and I will draw the diagram using a different color. Let me draw the axis here. 
So, there are two products and I mentioned them as product, this P, P is not the price, it is product, just what one, product 1 and product 2. Now, consider your budget is fixed and you want to um, spend money for your consumption and as savings. So, obviously, if your budget, your total income, your total salary is fixed and obviously, if your expenditures increase, then your savings decrease and if you are uh, unconsider, if your expenditure decreases, obviously, you will try to increase your savings. Consider another example, you want to consume some uh, amount of hot beverage. So, this is a very common example, say for example, tea or coffee. If the prices of tea increases, obviously, you switch to coffee and vice versa depending on that. So, if you consider the concept of Pareto optimal solutions in the two, di two dimension space and these concepts were definitely highlighted in few of the examples which we did in the first set of lectures in the first week. So, generally depending on your indifference curve or your level of budget, we will basically have I 1 which is indifference 1, then I 2, then I 3 and so on and so forth, where as you move, move from I 1 to I 2, I 2 to I 3 obviously, it means your level of satisfaction is increasing, but the balance which you want to do between product 1, product 2, tea, coffee or expenditure and consumptions, um, uh, expenditures and savings should be balanced in such a way that you maintain that parity. Now, these curves can be extended for the higher dimensional wall. So, say for example, in the three dimension, it will look like a circus tent which is just an envelope and any point there which you consider would be the optimum point based on what is your level of satisfaction which you are trying to meet based on all the three products. Because in that case, there would be product 1, product 2, product 3. In this example, there are only two products, because it is in a two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate. Now, continuing uh, these examples, so the three properties which we will mention here theoretically and later on it will be highlighted as we consider the examples. By the way, when I mention the concept of highlighting, it will come up naturally as we solve the problems. The first property is property of dominance. So, we will say in mathematical terms a vector x or the decision which you are going to take will is said to dominate a vector y. So, x and y are two sets such that, that the functional values of f x and f y in, in maximum of the cases, maximum when I am mentioning, I will come to that later, f i or an or f i x or f i y. So, f i is basically any objective function which you have, you have basically uh, j number of objective functions, we are collect considering each of them individually. So, it will give you the fact that for any i from i is equal to 1 to j or of any j, small j is equal to 1, 1 to capital J, f j x will dominate or will be greater than in value than f j y. I am calling it j because we are considering the number of objective functions as j small j is equal to 1 to capital J. Here it is basically let me mark it with a different color. This is j small j, this is 1 to capital J. So, it will be greater than equal to sign and it will be strictly greater for at least one of these capital J's, which means that in case if you have the dominance, the functional value based on x when you compare with y can be equal for all the cases except one. In that case, we will say the set solution of x will dominate y. Now, if I consider the concept of strong, so property of dominance basically if I go into further on in this concept of strong parrot optimality, we will consider a vector x again a solution x star, x, x star is basically a vector which is the element of x, x is the set of solutions which you have is defined to be as strong of parrot optimal 
the word strong is important. If there exists some x star such that it dominates all the other x's in capital X and this concept of strong optimality point would basically prove that there are decision variables x star which would be denoted as subsets of x. So, this concept of subsets would be used in such a way that they can be proper subsets or just common subsets which are there. Now, the concept of weak Pareto optimality, this ideas which I am explaining would be made clear with the examples which I said. A vector x star in x is defined as weak Pareto optimality. Let me use a different color, say for example, blue. If there exists no other vector of x such that f i x is less than, not less than equal to, is less than x star and this objective vector would be called a weak Pareto optimality if it corresponds to x star and is weak Pareto optimality based on the fact it is less. In the other case, it was basically based on the fact that, that less than sign can be replaced by less than equal to sign also. Now, when we consider the concept of Pareto optimality, we will always consider very simply the set which would dominate or a set of solutions which will dominate the other solutions in at least one of these values of, of x based on the, the concept of different type of objective functions which I have. So, say for example, if I have very simply set 1 which I am denoting in black color and the objective values are given here. So, I am not considering the corresponding x for the time being. So, f 1 is 2 based on that particular x star 1. So, this is x star 1 star I am just utilizing in order to denote the second value based on x 1 star and remember x 1 star which I am writing is basically a vector. So, the second objective function is say for example, 3 and the third objective function is basically 4. When I want to compare with a different set of solution and I will use a different color, consider it is x 2 star and x 1, x 2 are vectors again, they are a subset of the overall set of solutions and the solutions of f 1, f 2, f 3 are now considered 2, 3 and 3, which would mean x 1 star does not dominate x 2 star based on functional value 1, because both are 2, they are equal to x 1 star does not dominate x 2 star based on functional value f 2, because both the values are 3, but interestingly which I will mark here with a different color, the value of f 3 based on x 1 star and when I compare the value of f 3 based on x 2 star, 4 is greater than 3. So, in that case we can we would say that x 1 star would dominate the value of x 2 star, but where the problem would lie. So, here there is no confusion in the sense that 2 is equal to 2, 3 is basically equal to 3, I am talking about the values of f 1, f 2, f 3 and 4 is great, greater than 3. So, x 1 star dominates x 2 star, but now consider another example. So, I will use a different color and let me mark it in green and marking in on the top consider x 3 star. The values of f 1, f 2, f 3 are when I am going to compare with x 1 star only. Now, here it is interesting. If I compare the values of x 1 star, x 3 star for f 1, f 2, f 3, if you see x 1 star when I want to find out x f 1 is 2, but when I compare with the value of f 1 based on x 3 star it is 3. So, obviously, 
X3 star which is noted in green color is dominating. Next when I come to F2 functional value, both the values for X1 star and X3 star are 3, so they are equal. When I come to the concept of the function value of F3 based on X1 star and X3 star, you will find X1 star is 4 while the value of X3 star is 3. So, the dichotomy or the decision based on, I will use a different color, based on the fact that 3 is greater than 2 here which is fine, but here 4 is greater than 3 which basically tilts the balance again in favor of x1 star. But the question is that the net worth of 3 being greater than 2 or 4 being greater than 3 has to analyze where the concept of Pareto optimality and dominance has to be considered. So, I may say, I as an individual would say that the functional value which I have for f1, 3 is better. Other person may say, no, 3 is not better, maybe 4 is better than 3. When I am talking about 4 and 3, if you look at this set of diagrams which I have drawn, the confusion should be not there. Now, we will consider a very simple two dimensional figure to analyze the ideas of Pareto optimality. So, it will illustrate the Pareto optimality plots for four different combinations and will denote the objective functions. Now, we are going to consider the objective functions by using objective 1 underscore, objective 2 underscore, where objective 1 and objective 2 are the two different sets of values which I want. So, let us consider objective function 1 and objective function 2 in a very simple sense. This is f1 and this is f2. So, in the other example, in the other slides, we consider f1, f2, f3 and in general, they would be capital J number of such objective functions. I am not mentioning anything for this example about the decision variables. They can be L in number, L can be, and that is capital L, L can be, can be 3, can be 4, can be 5, can be 10 accordingly. Now, the bounded area which we will see now would basically depict the hypothetical feasible set and the boundary would be considered to be optimum set of feasible points depending on whether it is a maximization or a minimization of that objective function which you are considering. Now, here it is important if you remember for the other examples when we are considering those x1 star, x2 star, x3 star using the different colors and the values of the objective function capital uh, f1, f2, f3. I was always mentioning the point that you are trying to maximize. Hence, 2 being less than 3 would mean that the objective function value is better to have 3 than 2. So, we are always trying to maximize, but it can be the other way around also. That means, we want to minimize. So, the minimization concept and the ideas what I mentioned in the last slides would continue to hold true, but you have to look at the point that you are trying to basically reduce that value of the function form that is f1, f2, f3. Now, in the coming uh, set of, of the diagrams, there are different type of color combinations which I have used in order to make it clear. The red colored would basically the Pareto optimal points in A, B is for the case when we consider the minimization of objective function 1 along with the minimization of objective function 2. So, if you notice the second bullet point I did mention there is a minimization maximization concept also. So, in combination there would be four different ways of trying to analyze, which is maximization of f1, which is objective function 1 along with maximization of objective function 2, then minimization of f1 and minimization of f2, then maximization of f1, minimization of f2 and the last one will be minimization on f1 and maximization of f2. So, with this I will close uh, this uh, 23rd uh, lecture and continue this slide would also be shown in the next class or in the next lecture because this will uh, continue with some discussions and have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention.